and those that are joining us virtually um, get into the Zoom. We're delighted to be here today for We Can, Tyler Gordon's new book. Good afternoon and welcome to PNP Live. My name is Margaret Orto and I'm the events coordinator in the children and teens department at Politics and Prose. Politics and Prose is delighted to partner today with DC Public Library and the DC Public Library Foundation for an inspirational program featuring teen artist, Tyler Gordon, who will present his debut book, We Can, Portraits of Power. We're delighted to welcome both our in-person audience at the Martin Luther King Library, as well as those watching virtually at home. A special thanks to the DC Public Library staff for working so hard with politics and prose to make this hybrid event a possibility. A few notes before introductions. Closed captioning is available for today's program. If you're watching virtually, click the live transcript button at the bottom of your screen. Today, after Tyler's presentation and moderated Q&A from the library's teen moderators, there will be an opportunity for the audience to ask a question. For those watching at home, please enter a, Q a, a question in the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen, and those will be passed on to um, the teens in the library. Um, and for those in the audience at MLK, you should find some index cards in your seats and, and um, uh, also volunteers will be distributing them uh, along with pens. If people want a card and don't have one, they can raise their hand. Please write any question you may have for Tyler on these cards and the volunteers will collect them. Um, and then for those watching virtually at home, we'll place the book purchase link in the chat for your own copy of Tyler's book, We Can, Portraits of Power. These books will come with signed book plates while supplies last. For those in the auditorium at MLK, the free copy of Tyler's book, We Can, Portraits of Power, that you've received have been generously donated by the District of Columbia Public Library Foundation. This, this program today is presented in conjunction with DC Public Library's Know Your Power contest sponsored by PEPCO. Teens were invited to submit an original work of writing, photography, illustration, or music that expresses their feelings on a social issue that matter, matters to them. The Know Your Power contest winners will be announced directly following this event at 4 p.m. in person at the library. Now on to the, the introductions. Um, I'm delighted to welcome teen artist Tyler Gordon, who skyrocketed to fame when he painted a portrait of Kamala Harris and landed a time cover of LeBron James. His debut picture book, We Can, Portraits of Power, which you have in front of you today, features his graphic paintings of the American heroes who have inspired him. Musicians, artists, writers, civil rights leaders, sports legends, change makers, record setters, and more. Um, paired with short profiles written by Tyler um, of each of these uh, people profiled. Born with deafness, battling bullies, and a stutter, Gordon embraced art as a way to communicate his big thoughts and feelings with the world. He joins us today from California. In conversation with Tyler today are Blair Mashala and Sheridan Waters, two teen employees of DC Public Library. Blair Mashala is a senior at Duke Ellington School of the Arts and a student of the Literacy, Media, and Communications Department. She has written several short stories and articles and helped direct many film shoots and photography campaigns. Sheridan Waters will be attending the American University at Paris in fall 2022. In addition to being on DC Public Library's Teen Council for the past two years, she has been a member of the Freer Sacklers Teen Council and an intern of the Hirshhorn's Emerging Artist Program. After Tyler's presentation, Sheridan and Blair will rejoin him to ask some questions. And now I'm delighted to turn the program over to Tyler. Tyler, take it away. So hello. My name is Tyler Gordon, I'm 15 years old. And I started painting when I was 10 years old. And I started at a school STEM fair. 
they opened up an art category, so we're allowed into art into competition. And I had this great idea to paint my principal for the very first time. And that night, I had this dream of God telling me that I could paint. So I so I ran to mom's room and told her about my dream. And I at first she yelled at me since it was three in the morning. Then the next night at five in the morning, I had the exact same dream, except this time God told me if I did not use my talent, he would take it away. So I just ran to mom's room crying at five in the morning. And when it turned to six o'clock, she gave me one of her canvases and she paints too. My whole family paints. And my very first portrait took exactly 17 minutes. I painted my very first portrait. And I've been painting ever since. My artwork really skyrocketed when I painted a portrait of Kevin Durant and Kevin Durant's mom seen it and she tweeted it. And then, excuse me, then Kevin Durant saw it and he ordered 17 more. And that's when my artwork really skyrocketed. And When I was around six years old, they discovered that I was deaf. And when I was six years old, I had surgery on my left ear and it left me with a really bad stutter. And I used to get teased a lot about it. And I used to express all my anger and sadness into my paintings. And I just found paintings a way just to drift off into my own personal world and just do what I love. And I decided to create a book about me and my struggles and people who inspires me. And all my challenges that I've had. Another challenge that I've had when I was 12, I broke both of my hips. And we didn't know to three months after. We got tons of x-rays and they thought it was growing pains. So we changed hospitals and they found out that, that my hips are broken for three months. And since I was walking around on broken hips, they did get worse. And I was trying to create a book about all my struggles and people who inspired me. So, my book is called We Can Purchase a Power. And it's all about excuse me. It's all about people who inspire me. And as you flip through the book, you'll see random people who inspire me. And a text about why they and I guess my book is a way just to inspire other kids to keep doing what they love. And my main goal is to keep inspiring other kids to keep doing what they love. Thank you for listening.
Thank you so much, Tyler, for that introduction. Um, I wanted to jump right in with some questions for you. Um, I know that you have been painting for a long time, but one of my questions were, what was your key driving force to take your illustrations and turn them into a book? And what made you decide that it was the time to transition from not only being an artist, but now being a published author? Well, when I decided to make my first book, I was really about showing other kids that all these celebrities were, were also kids with a dream and they followed that passion and became something incredible. And now they inspire other kids. So I feel like making a book about that It's also what I'm trying to do with my art, just keep inspiring other kids and like I said, that's just my main goal. Okay, thank you so much, Tyler. Hi Tyler. I have a question about your work and your main paintings. Have you ever wanted to explore a medium outside of painting, maybe digital art or sculpture? Have you ever wanted to explore something that's not painting, but still art? Um, yes, I have. I actually have a couple of pieces here in my home that I've created with just my old shoes and paint and I made tons of things inside my home, whether it's a coat rack or just something from my mom. So I have thought of doing more art styles, but I haven't really done a lot. Great, thank you. Uh, my next question would be, uh, as you were explaining uh, your introduction and telling us all that you've been through in your journey with your illustrations, I wanted to know what do you advise artists to do to keep their drive and keep their motivation and what things do you practice to maintain that sense of balance when things get hard? You explained about your broken hip and you being partially deaf. It, was, it seems like a lot has kept you going and I, uh, with your artwork. And I wanna know what you advise other people to do when they're facing hard times or challenges, how to keep that artistic integrity and you know, keep faith in your art. Yes, so. What I did when I had struggles and challenges and I used to get bullied for it, I didn't let the stuff get to my head I usually just ignored them, whatever they said, because I love what I do and my drive to keep doing it is, I think about all the little kids out there with a dream who also have challenges and I have to see fit that they follow their dreams and keep following their talent as long as anybody get in their way. Thank you so much. That's very strong and very brave and a very determined mindset. And I appreciate you for sharing that with the audience. Thank you. Okay, Tyler, my next question for you is about art and activism. In your book, you have a lot of portraits of politicians and people who have worked with the activism to better their communities. And I was wondering, how do you feel about art and activism and where do they tie into each other for you? I feel like my art is a way to, if there are problems in the world, I make it so those problems are noticed 
And I just try to keep the positivity all around and just keep inspiring kids and adults just to, no matter what, don't let nobody tell them they can't do something and to, to keep following their passion. Great. Thank you so much for that question. I mean, for that answer. Um, my next question for you would be, one, how do you get inspired to produce a piece of artwork? And two, is there a certain artist, whether it's a celebrity or an activist, that you have been like kind of excited but tempted to paint? Like, is there someone you've always had in mind that you wanted to paint them and, you know, showcase them? And how do you get inspired uh, to produce a piece of art? Well, there are tons of people that I painted and want to paint, but excuse me, the main person that I want to paint but can't is my mom because I promised her since my artwork started with her, it will end with her. So my very last portrait would be of her. That is so beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. That's so sweet to hear, Tyler. Okay, so my next question for you is about the pandemic and how the pandemic has impacted your workflow. As we know, it's made a lot of people initially stay home and not maybe have outside forces of motivation to keep inspiring them. So I want to know how you've worked through the pandemic. Well, the pandemic has given some struggles. I used to travel to a lot of places just to paint. Either it's the park or the beach or just random places. But during the pandemic, I'm only limited to certain areas. And I guess I'm not allowed to travel and, and paint outside as much, but I still try to produce the same amount of paintings as I used to before the pandemic. Great. Um, Tyler, I'm going to move on to some of the audio audience questions. One of the audience members said, that they were very inspired by your book and they will ask the question, if you were able to meet any of your inspirations, who would you choose? I would definitely choose Barack Obama. Great answer. I would probably say the same. Okay, for my audience question, they said, thank you for sharing your beautiful portraits with us and the world. What would you like to share with us about your next project or body of work, and does it have a certain theme? So, currently, right now, I'm working on going on tour with Damien Escobar. I actually had my first show last week in Detroit, and we have many shows to come. And I'm also working on two NFTs. And also my next future book. Congratulations on your first show. I hope Detroit went well. I know they appreciated you and your art. Um, we have a few more audience questions to get through. So one of the next audience members asked, who was your favorite person to paint? Um, that's like a tough question because it's a tie between VP Kamala Harris and Kevin Durant. Oh, those are two of your uh, starting points and those are the ones you share with the audience. So I'm sure, you know, they've all got to look. Those were the first ones I've seen that you did as well. They were beautiful. 
Um, so yes, thank you for that. Thank you. Okay, Tyler, so my next audience question says, are there any other new ventures that you want to journey on that you haven't shared with us yet? And would you like to go to college and study art? Um, I would like to go to college, but not to study art because I feel like if I take any art classes, they'll try to change the way that I do my art and my style. And I feel like my style is a very unique style. And I just love the way that I do my art. That's great. And that's very true to you and true to your artistic integrity and your artistic talent. That will actually kind of tie into the next question that the audience member was asking is, what is your signature technique and style? And how do you stay true to that? We see that you said that college would kind of take away from your own artistic integrity, but what would you say your signature technique and style in your artwork is, or how would you describe it? I would describe my style of art shadow painting because I paint the light and shadows off of people's faces. And I actually got my style from my mom. She sort of created it. Oh, that's amazing. See, it's in the family. Yes. I absolutely love your style of art, Tyler. I think it's so gorgeous and it really does well, especially for portraits. Um, my next question for you is about social media and the Obviously, social media played a very large role in you becoming internationally recognized and promoting your art. So how do you feel about social media? How often do you use it? What's your favorite part about it? And how do you deal with um, like negative comments or haters or anything like that? Well, I feel like social media played a very big part because I use social media to post my artwork online so people can see it. And I don't actually run the social media. My manager, Damien Escobar does. And my publicist, Casey Woods. And they sort of they manage and block off all the hated comments that they don't want me to see. So I don't really see those type of stuff on my social media. Okay, great. And we can all what social media should everyone in the audience uh, go to? Twitter, Instagram. Um, I have both. And on both, it's Ty Gordon's World. And you could find all of my artwork on there. And you can also go to my website, tygordonsworld.com, and you'll find all my social medias. You heard it here, audience. Ty Gordon. You have the you have the Instagram, Twitter, and his own website. So Keep that in mind when you're looking to research more or to see more of his artwork and as well as his new book. Thank you, Tyler. Our next thank question you. is from a number in the audience and they said, thank you for sharing your story. It's very inspiring. And thank you for putting your imprint as a young African-American man. Where do you see yourself 10 years from now? Owning a gallery, owning your own gallery or I see myself in the future, um, like you said, on my own gallery. And I still see myself inspiring other kids. But excuse me. One of my main goals also is to keep supporting my family. And I promised my mom that one day 
I'll buy her a new house. That's a, that's a very inspiring goal. And I know one day you will succeed in that promise. And I know that your mom trusts that you will keep it for her. So thank you for that and appreciate the audience. Bro. Thank you. Okay, Tyler, my next audience question that I have for you says you have quite the fan club, including VP Kamala Harris. What does that feel like? Um, I'm actually really grateful that all these people support me and especially VP Kamala Harris. When I received that phone call, I was just amazed that she took time out of her day just to call me. So I'm just really grateful for all the opportunities that I've been given. Okay, thank you, Tyler. It looks like there's no more audience questions, so I'll continue all with my own. Um, you are very well known, and you you will go down in Black history. So my question for you is, when you are featured in a Black history book or publication, what would you want history to say about you? I wanted to say that I was a young boy who had a dream and kept following it. And I lived just to keep inspiring other kids to keep following their talents and dreams. Great. Okay, Tyler, you talk a lot about wanting to inspire young artists and inspire other kids. This audience question asks specifically about that, says, do you have any advice for new young artists who are still developing their talent? Yes. My advice is to keep following your dreams and anything is art. I've seen the most famous drawings which sell for a million just be a blue line down a white canvas and it's sold for millions. So Art is what you make it, and there's no right or wrong when it comes to art. Thank you. Yes, I also agree with that. Art is in many forms and many shapes, and you are introducing the world to your own style of art, which is something everyone can take from your book, and everyone here in the audience has one as well. So thank you for that. And my next question would be, are, is there any particular artist that you look up to that inspires you? And not just in illustration, but you know, filmmakers, writers, directors, any artist that you look up to or inspires you? Yes. Um, there are multiple artists who inspire me, but one of the main ones our basket, Chadwick Boson, and my mom. Beautiful, beautiful. I, Tyler, I love that your mom inspires you so much. I think that's absolutely beautiful. My next question that I have for you is about work-life balance. You are obviously a very, very, very busy artist. So how do you find time to do it all? especially loaded on the pandemic and not having the same outlets that you might have had before, how do you find time to maintain that work-life balance? Um, I just learned to balance my work life, also with school. And I actually don't find it hard for me because I'm still able to keep doing what I love at the same time, still continue with school. And I also have my entire family, my siblings, and my school supporting me. Great, thank you so much. Uh, when you say that your school is supporting you when you have all these outlets and people that you can look up to, I wanted to know if when you are painting and when you are doing your illustrations, especially in this book, do you see out when you paint, do you see out of the lens exclusively 
color by being a black man, or do you see out the lens of humanity in your art? Um, I just see that I'm just a young boy who is following his dreams and it's inspiring not only kids, but adults. Very true, very true, thank you. Tyler, I do wanna say that you are absolutely an inspiration. I'm an artist myself and I love your work. My next thank question you. I have for you is about the process of deciding to turn your portraits into a book. I wanna know what the process was like and I also would like to know what your favorite part of your book is. Well, the process is actually really hard because we have to go through which portraits are allowed in the book and what the text should say. But one of my most favorite parts of the book I'm definitely showing Kamala Harris and Barack Obama because they both really inspire me to keep doing what I love. Great answer. Um, when it comes to people being able to take something away from the book, what is something you hope everyone can take from your art and from the book? that everybody in the book were also kids with dreams and they kept doing what they love and now they're inspiring other kids. just to keep following their dreams and talents. Exactly, thank you. I love that answer, Tyler. Um, okay, my next question I have for you is a bit personal. My favorite type of literature to sit down and unwind with is children's literature. And I love it so much because it's, it's so accessible and I feel everyone can read it because it's so easy and there's lots of pictures. So I wanted to ask you, how important is accessibility to you? And what does it mean to you in terms of literature and how does it play out in your life? Well, I feel like when I tried to write a book, I didn't know exactly what I was doing. And one of the main points my book is trying to reach is that no matter where you came from, whether you're a kid or adult that You will have struggles, but you can always overcome those challenges. And that no matter where you come from, my book is basically showing that you can keep following your dreams. Great answer. Thank you, Tyler. I heard that you say you have all these shows coming up and all these projects that you're working on this project as well. So how much time does it usually take you to work on a project and how do you manage you and your time? Um, I don't exactly know how long it takes because I don't really control that area, but it does take me around 20 or 30 minutes to do one portrait. 
So I feel like my talent to be able to paint fast is also something really helpful. Great answer. Thank you so much. Thank you. I did not know that it takes you um, 20 to 30 minutes to paint. That is so incredibly fast. Wow. Thank you. Really, really impressive. I think my next question I have for you, Tyler, is about... Hmm. So while you were working on your book, is there, I know you said it was a difficult process, is there anything you wanted to include that you didn't get to that you would want to put in a different book? Um, I have another book coming out. I actually have another book coming out. next year so everything that you cannot make it into the book i'll put in there makes sense makes sense and good luck on your new project and i can't wait to maybe be able to do this interview again with you next year when your new book releases and you know we can go over these same questions uh and you know, I have another audience question that came up, and it is one: what is one thing that you would tell young artists in order to encourage them? That when I started out painting, when I look back at my very first portrait, I made really good progress, and. It does take time, but I've learned to now work with more colors while I'm painting. And I feel like my portraits in all got way better. Thank you. I hope the audience was able to take from that and all the questions that have been asked so answered so far. Tyler, I think that's a great answer. I think as artists, it's important to look at your work and really view the progression. And I think it's great when you're working in a medium like yours because you can see it. And it's really inspiring, really inspiring to just look back at your own work and be like, wow, I've made a lot of progress. Uh, my next question is, would you ever do a book based off of um, themes, like certain around certain social issues? I know a lot of photographers that have done a series on the pandemic and maybe called it like Faces of the Pandemic and they focused on doctors and nurses and essential workers that were really, really putting in the work. So I was wondering if you would ever venture on a themed book like that. Um, I actually would do one about my virtual gallery out in New York, um, that's also something that I'll do it about. Great. Uh, I think this will be the last question and to wrap it up. But uh, one question I did see from the audience is if you weren't a painter, where would you see yourself? Um, I actually don't know, but I'll still see myself finding some type of way to keep inspiring other kids and adults. Great answer, great answer. And you are doing a phenomenal job at inspiring this kid right here. So thank you for this. Thank you. I want to thank you so much. You are absolutely an inspiration. If that is your goal, that is your dream, you are doing it. And I'm so, so happy that you took the time out of your day talk to us. I'm so, so grateful and your work is absolutely amazing and I cannot wait to dive into this book and your next. Thank you so much. It was great to meet you, Tyler. Thank you, you too. Yeah, um, many thanks to Tyler for joining us today um, to talk about his gorgeous, wonderful, inspiring art um, and to share his process. 
Um, thank you to the DC Public Library and to DC Public Library uh, Foundation. Um, and a, a big, huge thanks to Sheridan and Blair today for being our hosts and great interviewers. Um, we're going to put the book purchase link back into the chat for those of you watching virtually. And for those of you in the auditorium, don't forget that um, the Know Your Power Art Contest um, program and winners are going to be announced um, coming up right next, right after this. So uh, uh, you'll get to enjoy that if you're in person. Um, thanks again, everyone, for joining. Um, stay safe. Keep, keep reading, um, keep, keep uh, being inspired and, and living your dreams. Um, and we'll say good, good afternoon to everyone. Thanks again.